I'm Nancy Seidler. My sister Linda Garvey and I collaborated to make this wisteria tree. Linda is very creative and a polymer clay artist. She came up with the concept and I was flabbergasted. Linda made the armature. She fashioned the grass and stones, tree bark, canopy, and leaves of polymer clay. I braided the vines and the wisteria blossoms. The technique I used was kumihimo. A frequently asked question is, how long did it take to make? Well, I can't tell you how many hours it took for the whole project. I can tell you how long it took to make one wisteria blossom. My brother-in-law, Terry Garby, filmed the process, and you'll see it only in glimpses of each step. Each blossom has four sizes of glass beads and starts with a small rubber o-ring that is used to attach it to the vine. The o-ring is small enough to collapse and be hidden inside the hole of the bead. On the wisteria tree there are ten blossom beading patterns worked in two sizes and many color combinations. The first step is loading beads on a wire to form a core. The wire will be removed near the end of braiding, but the beads will remain in the interior of the blossom to keep it firm. The core beads are suspended from a turnbuckle above the muradai braiding platform, and the beads are held back until they are needed. The braiding pattern is eight strand round. To eliminate thread ends at the top of the blossom, the beading thread is cut into four double lengths. An alligator clip marks the center of each thread to ensure enough thread for braiding. The bead loading pattern is to my left. Counting out the beads for each thread is critical. Braiding eight threads of beads results in six spiraling columns of beads. The patterns for the blossoms call for 13 to 17 beads per thread. Any mistake in loading will change the results. The size of the smallest bead dictates the size of the needle and thread to be used. The smallest bead in each blossom is 15, calling for a very fine thread. Each end of the thread is tied on to a tama or weighted bobbin. A hitch in the thread holds the beads in place as well as extra thread around the tama to let out during beading. An alligator clip keeps the beads in place until needed. As each of the four threads is loaded, it is taped in place on the muradai. Just as it is critical to load the beads on the threads in the correct order, it is important that the threads be, are in the correct position on the braiding stand. Kumahimo requires weights and counterweights to provide the tension to produce good results. The tama and beads are weighed. And the correct counterweight is calculated. This only needs to be done once for each project. When making a longer braid, weights are removed from the counterweight bag as the braid gets longer. This is a short braid and no counterweight needs to be removed. A fine thread is loosely tied around the center cross and the counterweight bag is hooked on. Once the tape is removed from the threads, and the clips removed from the beads, 
braiding can begin. Four crosses are done without beads to set the thread pattern. Now the core beads are released and clamped down so they will be incorporated in the interior of the blossom. A bead is brought up on each side of the crossing thread. The first beads are quite small, but as larger ones come into the braid, you can see how they are trapped under the thread in front of the crossing thread. The next cross adds a bead and further locks the previous bead, pulling threads to the center and forcing the beads to the outside. Braiding has only two motions, top bottom cross and slide, left right cross and slide. After all of the core beads are encased in the blossom, the top clip is removed and the last few beads are added. I'm removing the bottom clip and pulling the wire out of the core beads. Four crosses of thread only, each hand tightened, complete the braid. A drop of glue secures the braid and is left a short while to dry. When the glue is dry, the counterweight is removed and the blossom comes out of the mirror die. On my work surface, the tama are removed. Threads are detangled. The kinked ends are cut away, and the counterweight thread is clipped and removed. How to deal with thread ends is a decision that must be made on every project. For the wisteria blossom, they were incorporated into the design to emulate stamens. First, a large hole bead is threaded over all eight strands to cover the short end braid. Small beads are added with a very fine needle to make three stamens. Each stamen has two to three threads and often needs two to three passes of the needle to get them all through depending on the size of the bead's hole. A knot in the thread secures the beads in place. The threads are then cut at varying lengths. The wisteria blossom is done. It has taken 74 minutes, almost an hour and a quarter, to make one wisteria blossom. There are 99 blossoms on our wisteria tree. Music